Let's do an overview of these tide table practice problems. This is practice problem one. And I just want to run through the steps we use to get this answer. So first we read the problem, right? Determine the height of tide at 1430 EST at New Bedford, Mass. on 10 April. So we recorded everything. We wanted the height at 1430 EST, which means there's no daylight savings time, right? It's just Eastern Standard Time at New Bedford, Mass., 10 of April. We recorded that, and then we set up our problem. We say, we're going to get the reference station, and we're going to get differences from the time high, differences from the time low, and differences from the height high, and differences from the height low. So we set all this up, and then we enter into the index to find New Bedford. So, boom. Here's our reference book. The back half is the tide current tables. The front half is the tide table. So we're in the front half. I always clip it off. As soon as we start flipping in, this is the index to stations. These are all the subordinate stations. So we find New Bedford. We cruise to the ends, LMN, and we find New Bedford. Here's all the news, new, 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 new Bedford mass. And it is 11. 35. We record that 1135 here. 1135. This is the number that we're going to look up in table twos. And then we bounce to our table twos, which is closer to the beginning of the book. And we look up 1135. So here's the numbers. This is where we're looking it up. We cruise to 1135. Oh, there's nine. There's 10. 1066. 1177, we know we're on this page. So we cruise down this list and we find 1135. 1135, New Bedford. And so here's the differences, right? If we cruise up, we'll say on Newport, page 40. That's our reference station. So we record that. And then these are all the differences. Differences time high, differences time low. Difference height high, difference height low. We set this all up beforehand, and now we just record the information in this table so we don't forget it. New bed for it, so we're plus 10 at the high, plus 10, plus 12 at the low, plus 12, and then here's the height high, plus 0 0.2. We record that here, 0 0.2 and 0, 0, we record that here. And now we have that information, Recorded, we jump to Newport, page 40, in our table ones. So here's the page numbers, and it's an excerpt, so it jumps around. So we go to 40. Good, 40. And this starts Newport. So we're on, er, yeah, Newport, and we're on what day? The 10th of April. So you look up here, it's January, February, March, April. So now we are here in April, and we're looking for April 10th. Here's the days. It even gives the day of the week. April 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so now we're on April 10th, and we're given all these times and heights. 540, 3.3, that's a high tide. 1129, 0, 0, that's a low tide. 1801.35, that's a high tide. 2351 minus 0.1, that's a low tide. What we need to figure out is which, we're at 1430. Where does this lie? Well, right off the bat, it looks like it lies between 1129 and 1801. And if we apply our time corrections to those, our time corrections only 10 minutes and 12 minutes. So yeah. We lie between 1129, which is a low tide, and 1801, which is a high tide. And I record these here, 1121.00, This just makes our life a lot easier. Now that we have all these numbers, we can start crunching them. So we take our 1129, it's low, and we put, our, we put it here, and we correct the low tide. It's still all zeros. And then our 3.5, 
is the height of the high. We put it here and consider the plus, plus 0 0.2 feet from 3.5 is 3.7. That's the height of the high at New Bedford, Mass. So now we find in order to enter table 3 and solve this, we need the range of this tide. So we just calculate it right away. 3.7 minus or plus, in this case, 0, 0.0. So our range is 3.7. And now we come over here and we take our 11.29 is a low. So we put it here. 11.29 and add the 12. We get 11.41. That's our time correction for the low. And our high, we can tell from this number, is 18.01. We put it here and correct it, and it's 18.11. And now, also to enter table 3, we need to find the duration of the tide. So we take the large time and subtract the small time. 18.11 minus 11.41 comes out to 6 hours and 30 minutes. And the last thing we need to do to go into table 3 is... We need the time from the nearest tide. And we have to figure out, are we nearer to the low or the high? Well, in this case, we are nearer to the low. Because the low is at 1141. And 1141 is closer to 1430 than 1811 is. And we can double check it. So we do, we do the subtraction, right? 1430 minus 1141 comes to 2 hours and 49 minutes. And we can double check because 2 hours and 49 minutes is less than half of 630. If it was more than half, we would be on the wrong track. But we're not. It's less than half. We know we're on the low. Now that we have the range duration and time from the nearest low, we can enter into table 3. Let's do that. So table 3, again, we flip into our tide tables. I, always, I like to bend the corner over here so you can see it's 239. What we do, get our straight edges going, and we enter into this table from duration of rise or fall. So in our case, the duration was 630. So we enter in over here. We have a 620 and a 640. We're right between the two, so I'm just going to stay under 640. And then you see all these numbers here? These numbers are all the time from the nearest high which we calculated time from, or excuse me, time from nearest high water or low water. We calculated 249 from the nearest low. So we look for this 249 on this row. We're cruising 2, 213, 27, 240. 253 is pretty close. And I know we're between here. So we're right in here, 245, 253. And so we're using this column. So we pivot. We come down this column, and this is where our second straight edge comes in. Because this side, we come in from over here, range of tide. We calculated that, right? Our range, 3.7. So we look on these numbers, and we come at 3.7. So we have 3, 3, 5. There's no 3, 7, but 3, 5 is the closest. So now with our second straight edge, we come over and this value, 1.4. We record that. Boom, 1.4. And now our job is to figure out, do we add or subtract this 1.4? Right? So we found time from nearest low. So if we're at low tide and we have a height correction, we're not going any lower. We're only going up. So we need to add 1.4 to the low. So here's the low. Our low was 0, 0.0, right? There was like, it's just 0, 0.0. So a 0, 0.0 plus our 1.4 correction gives us 1.4 feet is the height of the tide, right? 1.4 feet is the height of the tide at 1430 EST at New Bedford, Mass, 10th of April. And then we check, right? Here's one. We got 1, 4, 1, 4. Here's 1, 4, C, and we check. Boom, 1, 4, C, and we got it right. Take your time on these. Jump right into problem one. Don't get frustrated. Just 
be patient, do all these adding and subtracting of times and heights and ranges and durations and everything. Just kind of try to view these as a puzzle, not as a super outdated method of finding the height of a tide. Because everybody knows you can just click on your chart plot and bring up information on tide. Well, we are going to solve these like we were Magellan, okay? These are, this is like we do it in the 60s, 70s, before our chart plotters. This is how we do it, and this is what the Coast Guard wants us to know. So this is what we're doing. Be patient. Take your time. Once you practice, you'll get these steps down. And there's just like a bunch of adding and subtracting. And you just take your time, and you won't make very many mistakes. And by the time you're done with these, you're going to be good at working with time. We'll see you on problem one. Get at it. Get it.